Hello everyone, Tom here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, bot framework emulator. So if you've done any of my talks or um, any of the workshops or anything like that, you'll know I talk about the, the bot framework emulator when I'm talking about using bots. Um, and uh, it's a really good way of getting your code running locally before you push it up um, to use it in Teams or, or anywhere else using the bot framework. And I normally kind of gloss over how to go from you know, setting up the bot framework and get everything up and running because it's not very interesting. Um, so I just wanted to dig into that a little bit today because um, I've had some questions about it. So I'm going to assume that um, this is where you're starting. So um, you can see here I've downloaded a sample, um, the simple echo bot, um, and I've got it running. It's all running. You can tell it's running because it says running at the top. And also uh, the um, window is actually I've closed it so all I'm going to do is I'm going to stop running and just show you what that looks like um, when I start running uh, what you'll see is the uh, Internet Explorer or the Edge probably window open up and uh, that's your clue that this application is running now it's not actually doing anything very interesting but it is a fully working bot at this point and that's because the way that uh, the bot framework works is that you have your code um, and then you have the bot framework code and when a user talks to your bot actually they're talking to the bot framework and the bot framework then calls out to your code and says hey we've got a user here they've just uh, they sent you a message here's the message what do you want to do with it and then your code can process that and send back whatever response is appropriate and so actually your code here uh, is a API so it's listening waiting for the bot framework to hit it and for something to happen and that's why you see this page here. So this is just a, it's a kind of a, uh, like a placeholder page. Um, it's a website and you can see it here. Here's the web address for it. Um, and it's just serving up a page. It's actually serving up this default.html page here. And actually you don't need this default.html page to actually run the bot code. The bot code would run just fine without it. This makes you feel better that something has happened because you can't see your code just waiting for the bot framework. Now, if we were to uh, publish this, then the bot framework would be able to find our code. We could point it at our published address and would be off to the races. Uh, bot framework would be with our code. But we want to do this locally. So we have a local address here because we're running our code locally and the bot framework can't see that. And that's where the bot framework emulator comes in because the bot framework emulator will also call our code in exactly the same way that the bot framework does and therefore it kind of tricks our code into thinking it's talking to the bot framework um, and then our code will execute exactly as it would do if it were being called by the bot framework and that means that we can see what happens when our code runs we can see the responses and the bot framework emulator will do a good job of letting us send messages and also showing those messages coming back so what do we actually do how do we actually get there so first of all you uh, need to go and download the bot framework emulator. You can go and do that from GitHub. Um, let me just uh, show you what that looks like. Um, so this is the this is the address here: github.com slash microsoft slash bot framework dash emulator slash releases. I'll put that in the in the notes. Um, and this is where you get the latest version of the bot framework, and you can download it here. I'm going to assume you've done that. So uh, this is what it looks like when it's up and running okay so this is the bot framework emulator <clears throat> and there is a big open bot button here but i'm going to come back to that in a minute and i'm going to talk about this link here this create a new bot configuration i'm going to talk about that first and then i'm going to come back to this so to start click on create a new bot configuration now if you remember i said that uh, the bot framework is going to call our code the bot framework calls our code in a very specific way. It calls uh, the URL where our application lives, um, and then it calls that URL slash API slash messages. It always calls that, you can't change it. So if you're writing code, your code has to make sure it's listening on slash API slash messages. Now, if you use any of the samples, that's all written into the samples um, for you. You don't need to worry about it. So. The first thing that this bot framework emulator wants is a nice name. So I'm just going to give it um, uh, a fancy name and then it wants a URL. So 
the URL is made up of two parts. So there's the local part here, which is where our code is running. So we'll copy that. And then there's that magic slash API slash messages. And look, if you look here, it's telling you that's what you need. Let's put in slash messages. Everything else you can leave blank. You can leave these app ID and app passwords blank on one condition. And that is that in the web config, they're blank as well. If you've downloaded this from um, the Azure samples, they will be blank. If you have filled in these yourself because you're publishing up and now you want to test locally, you either need to make them blank when you're doing it locally or take those two values, the app ID and the app password, and make sure they go in here. That's a really common error is to kind of have your app ID and password set in here because you previously published or you've recently published and now you want to go back to checking, so sort of adding some more features locally, and then you forget that these need to go in here. All right, we're not going to put them in because they're not in our code, but we are going to click Save and Connect. And then it's going to ask us to save. And what it's asking us to save is our .bot um, configuration file. So that .bot, .bot file is just a, uh, it's just a config file. Uh, if you're downloading the version 4 samples, um, you'll actually have a .bot file in there already. If you're downloading the v3 ones, you won't. This was a v3 one and I didn't. What that bot uh, .bot file is useful for, it means that you can then open it directly from here using the open bot uh, button that's looking for .bot files. So you can share those amongst your team or whatever. Um, that's how what that button is for. Anyway, let's come back here because this is the tab that got opened. You can see the address to our local host here um, and some other things going on. You can see there's a chat window here and there's a log over on the right. The log is really useful in helping you debug things. So if I just type hello and I'm going to send that off to our code. Well, I'm not going to do it. The bot framework is going to do it. The bot framework is going to go to our code, call our code. Our code is going to run, send it back to the emulator and the emulator is going to show. Now. Um, we can actually click each of these messages and see the actual file, the actual JSON and everything that was returned. So as I click the you said hello here, uh, you can see the full JSON file that got returned back to the bot framework emulator. Um, so you can see all the IDs, all the URLs, you can see the times. So if you're doing any kind of advanced kind of debugging, that can be really, really useful in kind of figuring out what went wrong and what didn't work. Okay, now we can see it's calling our local code. Um, but maybe we just want to double check. So this is the sample, uh, the echo sample from um, from Azure. And what I can do is go and put a breakpoint on some code I know is going to run. Now, if I've just downloaded this and I don't know anything about the code, you can kind of cheat. So um, looking at this example, I can see that this is going to echo anything back that I say it. So I know it's always going to say you said. So that, that string that you said is bound to be in the code somewhere. So what I can do, just a bit of a cheat, I can just go looking for that uh, that string. And I find it in here, and this looks sensible. Like If you look at that, you can see here's a counter. And in fact, in the, bot, in the emulator, we see the counter. Um, and then here, so I can, this looks like the right line of code. So I could put a breakpoint on that. And this is just to kind of prove that the bot framework emulator is actually calling our code. So if I send this message, instantly you see that breakpoint got hit. Nothing has been returned yet. This is still showing as sending because it is still living inside our application. Our application has stopped at this point. At this point, I could have a look at the message. I could look at all the information about the message. Um, I'm now live within as kind of a broken point within this code. So uh, if I was doing something clunky and, and clever, I could, this would be a good place to go and debug, step through, uh, look at the context, look at everything, uh, look at all the good information I'm getting back about the message, um, including kind of the channel data, um, the time, you know, the text, all this kind of stuff, um, and make some good decisions. And when I'm ready, I can continue and it will carry on. You will sometimes see some strange messages here. So this is timed out. Uh, that's all that's happened there. It has actually worked, but because we've kind of waited too long at our breakpoint, that's why it says it couldn't send. 
you will see some strange stuff as well around the message when you, if you look inside the message some things will be missing so you'll see null values around uh, authenticated users channel information because this is really just a shell it's just a kind of test harness all right i hope that's been useful i hope if you've not used the bot frame accumulator before this is enough enough information that you need to get up and running with it um, it is a really useful tool um, to help you in um, and kind of building out uh, building out bots and testing them locally before you're ready to go publishing. Okay, I hope it's been useful. Uh, reminder that there's a ton more videos like this covering bot framework, covering teams, um, other development practices as well, all on my YouTube channel. So go and subscribe to that, or you can follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, the, uh, the links are all below. Thanks very much for watching.